A Mortal Kombat 11 tier list made by a noob, a trash player, garbage, doo-doo, rap. I don't have as much games as played as a lot of people, but I've fought every character enough and seen enough of every character to make a very, very, very average player's tier list. <clears throat> If you go to my profile on the game, you'll see that I don't have too many games played, you know, probably somewhere around like three to four hundred. But I have played lots of private matches in King of the Hills with, you know, decent players, but players around my level. This tier list is going to go from D to S tier. Starting off with the D tier, we're going to go into ASMR mode, Devora. Devora struggles heavily on the defensive side. She doesn't really have a good reversal special move besides her ovipositor rush that does like 2% damage. Basically, she pokes you to death with that move and can get the occasional setup. But at a lower level, she can get her turn stolen a ton. And she's also an ugly bitch. On to Kano. Raiden can probably be pretty nutty around my skill level as he can like teleport and he can control space really well with his long ranging normals like his uh, forward one. But with the Raidens that I face, all they tend to do is do forward three into storm cell. And me, with my big brain, I know that you can actually neutral duck storm cell and you can get a full punish. I was debating putting the collector in a higher tier as his standing four is actually a decent space control option and at a low level you can destroy people with it. I've tried collector a few times against you know a select few bad people but something I noticed about the collector at my level is that people tend to commit way too much to his 50-50 and he either gets 4% or a full combo punish. Shao Kahn is actually the only character I have in the C tier. I was debating putting him in a higher tier but me personally I really disrespect his forward two which is a high, so I just forward 4 all day, or I'll even down 2 sometimes, just randomly. If, he, if he's at that neutral range, and I see the forward 4 coming, I'll just down to it. But playing him is a different story. A lot of people that I play against when I'm playing Shao Kahn fall for that 4-2 and let me get, get away with it. This forward 3-4 into grab is a decent stagger, and at my level, if they're respecting it enough, you can get some good throw game going. Kotal Khan did recently get a buff, so I am debating putting him into A, but aside from his new variation, because I haven't messed around with it enough just yet, his 4-2-4 is a great move to throw out at mid-range and hit confirm into a special move, so you can play neutral like a boss, just with that string alone. Uh, you can also become a cat, which is fucking awesome. Now just like Kotal, I consider putting Sub-Zero a tier higher, but it's just that every Sub-Zero I play doesn't commit to an overhead unless you're Cam. Cam, I fucking hate you. But a lot of people, even at my level, don't commit to that 4-2 string. I know it's super unsafe, but most of the time you're landing it. It's a 50-50, so I guess. But you can even hit confirm the low. So the low is safe most of the time. And you can make the overhead safe with just staggering it and getting a bunch of plus frames. All in all, though, Sub-Zero gets good meterless damage with his low. And he also gets a really fun to block overhead to low special move. Now we're onto the A tier. And I can only assume that some people are very surprised that some characters aren't in the B or C. So I'm going to explain those two elephants right now. Katana mains love to downplay Katana, and I can see how they may struggle with her at a higher level, but at a lower level, Katana is nutty. Simply because she is very safe, and most of her strings will leave her at a perfect distance to use her back to, and catch you off guard when you're trying to either move forward or move backwards. And this happens at my level because nobody flawless blocks or studies the gaps that you can flawless block. But yeah, that, 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 that's basically it for Katana. <laughs> now this might anger some people, but I was actually considering putting Frost in the S tier. Uh, you know what, I think it only feels right to put Frost into ASMR mode as well. Um, Frost pisses me off because of her spinning blade special. I'm simply not able to read when that fucking move ends, especially when she enhances it. It's also only minus, like, two or some shit, so she can steal her turn back with a poke. If you try to even reversal or get your turn with, like, an 11 frame mid, she can take that shit right back from you. Or, if you try to respect that poke... She'll return and pressure with either a grab or a mid or some dumb shit. I'm going to go through the rest of the eights here pretty quickly just so, uh, you know, we can get things going here. So we're going to go for a speed round. Cabal has a good mid and can get out of poke wars very easily and can hit confirm into great damage with his new variation. Baraka has nutty damage and can stay safe most of the time. And he has good staggers if the opponent respects highs. Kung Lao. 
If your opponent respects Z hat enough, they'll become your bitch. Also, his forward one stagger is almost good enough to put him in S plus 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 plus. Aaron Black's scud shot cancels and his drop kick make me feel like I'm still playing day one Sonic Fox. Jackie's pressure is still disgusting, and I will never get around it. I always find Jackie stealing my turn, and it's uh it's not a fun time. Jade spams projectiles all day and does random ass shadow kicks. I fucking hate Jade. Shang Tsung, I still can't punish Shang Tsung's low fireballs um, by dashing after the first one, so that fucking pisses me off. Cetrion's a character I probably played the least online, and I really couldn't be more thankful. Her space control is disgusting with those fire beam dumb shit and uh, the those those rocks. Yeah, she she's uh yeah I'm grateful I haven't fought her much. The Scorpion Teleport nerf helps, but it's not good enough. His 4-3 stagger is still disgusting, and his spear shouldn't connect with a jumping opponent. Terminator, I mean, it's it's Arnold. You can't really get much better than that. Noob has disgusting damage, quick advancing high with 4-2, and I still get hit with that back 3 crushing blow, man. Like, there's literally no reason to block overhead, Matt. Get it through your thick skull, you dumb f Finally, we're on to the S tier. Uh, I know there's another two elephant in the rooms here. Or elephants in the room. Yeah, and that's Johnny and Scarlet. So I'll, I'll go through Johnny first. Johnny's back three four is absolutely ridiculous. It kind of puts him out of danger because his body kind of moves back, so he's harder to hit. It's actually a decent whiff punish, and he can either hit confirm and nut punch or his projectile to get pro to get plus frames. Man, I almost said that shit perfectly. And if your opponent blocks enough, his 4-3 actually becomes a really good stagger, and his zoning is also really good. Especially in that new disgusting variation where those fireballs actually arc, and they become a mid at a certain range, and it's fucking broken, and I hate it so much, and I never want to see it, and I want it to be removed. I think most people around my level would put Scarlet in S tier. Her zoning is unbeatable, and her normals, like her sweep, and her back 1, and her 2-1 can actually be a good stagger, and uh, her variation names are... Um, Disgusting to say the least. Jax's 4-3-3 and his 4-2 stagger are still gross, so that puts him in S tier. Although if you fight a bad enough Jax player, they actually do try to poke after his overhead swing. So all you really gotta do is have a quick mid, like Cabal. I'll use my 4-2 after he does it, and I'll catch literally so many Jax players poking. But me playing Jax if or you know, a better Jax or someone that's been playing fighting games a bit longer will know that seven frames is, is enough where you will need to block. Then you'll get throw punished, and then you can neutral duck and whiff that throw punish. I mean, punish that throw with a uppercut and get like fuck it, fuck it talk right now, man. Um, I hate Liu Kang so much that I don't even want to talk about him. He's honestly just a waste of breath. Nightwolf probably has the best auto shimmy in the game with his 1-1-1, and he has really good hit confirmable damage. Something I really haven't mentioned is that lots of people at this level like to poke after you land a poke. So having a hit confirmable fast mid like Nightwolf, Liu Kang, Kung Lao, Jax, Cabal is a godsend, really. Uh, Sonya, I would mention her 50-50 as a good tool of hers, but I don't find myself getting hit by it that often. I just down for myself out of danger with her, but what puts her up here for me is her zoning and damage on punishes. Cassie is super safe, super boring, has a restand, good crushing blows, good decent combo damage, a fast hit confirmable mid, good zoning. She's basically every single character type in one, and I wouldn't be surprised if NRS gave her a command grab in the next patch. And lastly is Gearus. I, I feel like Gearus isn't, you know, too overwhelming, but he does have some situations that he puts you in where he can just steal his turn back, or he'll get insane damage if you make a wrong move. So, uh, in the end, I, I feel like Gearus is um, good, yeah. <laughs> I don't really have much to say. I want to thank you for making it to the end. And if you did, be sure to comment. I was savagely attacked by Baraka on the way home from school yesterday in the comments. And yeah, uh, peace out.